three of the most prominent people on Northwestern University's campus. Head football coach Pat Fitzgerald, head men's basketball coach Chris Collins, and director of athletics Jim Phillips. I'm proud that I was born in Chicago and raised on the northwest side of, of the city. Share deep Chicago roots. I, I'm having a hard time coming up with other schools that the head football coach, the head men's basketball coach, and that the athletic director all grew up in the same town. But to find what's really binding these three colleagues, it's important to understand what matters most to each of them. Damn. Collins excelled on the basketball court at his North Suburban High School, winning Illinois' coveted Mr. Basketball Award in 1992. The game runs in his family. His dad, Doug, is the former NBA All-Star player, coach, and TV analyst. Having a parent that was very famous, uh, I was always kind of motivated as a young age to want my own identity, want my own legacy. Collins played at Duke University and later coached as an assistant there for 13 years. I've never known my life not being in a basketball gym. It's, it's what I've loved my whole life. It's been my passion. Um, people ask me all the time growing up, did you always want to be a coach? And the answer is no. I wanted to be a player. <laughs> and that was my dreams. But then once you kind of get to that point where you know you've maxed out who you can be as a player, um, you think about what's next and, and what can I do now and to, to be able to be a coach and kind of give back now to players and young people. Uh, what a lot of people did for me when I was growing up is, is very rewarding. In 2013, Collins took over the Northwestern men's basketball program. A lot of people told me not to do this, you know, not, not to come here. And for me, it kind of worked the other way. You know, I was motivated by the fact that people said that this couldn't be done and that you could never have a top flight basketball program at, at Northwestern. And to me, that excited me and it made me want to want to prove people wrong even more. Four years later, Collins took the Wildcats to basketball's NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. Advancing to the second round in 2017. Hopefully we're talking about a team by 2025 that, you know, has competed and, and maybe even accomplished Big Ten championships and um, sustained success in the NCAA tournament. Why can't we compete with the best of the best? You know, why can't we win Big Tens? Why can't we go to a Final Four? Why can't we eventually compete for a national championship? When Collins first arrived in Evanston, he got to know Northwestern's football coach, Pat Fitzgerald. I was very anxious. Um, to build a relationship with Pat. Um, coming in, you know, I viewed him as Mr. Northwestern. When I came in from day one, all he did was embrace me and my staff, and he really helped me learn about Northwestern. I felt a connection with Chris right away. I think, again, both Chicagoans both kind of played at the same time here, high school athletics. I think Chris getting our basketball program over that last kind of negative hurdle making the NCAA tournament in men's basketball. I think it eliminated the last negative aspect of Northwestern athletics narrative. I'm a fan first, so to see that success is, uh, is really awesome. I couldn't be you know, more grateful for how he accepted me right away. Sometimes football and basketball at the same school can be at odds because they're kind of the two most prominent programs and you know they're fighting for you know are you a football school a basketball school so to have someone who's your own age who's been very successful who has your back that you can go to and you know lean on each other for support in good times and in bad it's been a great relationship Northwestern's head football coach Pat Fitzgerald grew up in South Suburban Orland Park Fitzgerald enrolled at Northwestern University. He played on the 1995 Rose Bowl team and twice earned first team All-American honors. You know, my dad and mom, neither of which went to college. And so for me to go to college as a male in my family uh, was a big deal. You know, most of my family are in law enforcement or they're in fire protection. They're in, in the trades here in the city. Uh, and we're a hardworking blue collar family. We take great pride in that. Fitzgerald worked as the defensive back coach at his alma mater before being named Northwestern's head football coach at the young age of 31. I'm here because uh, I believe I'm meant to be here. 11 years and seven postseason bowl games later, Northwestern is now a regular contender. Fitzgerald's leadership lessons, 
extend way past the gridiron. I think number one, you have to be genuine. I think you have to know who you are. And, and I think we're getting lost in that a little bit. I think with social media, I think with the influx of information, I, I think we're at an all time high of me comparing myself to others. And, and I think that's a great trap to fall into. You truly have to have some self-awareness. And you know, for, from my perspective, I, I think I've learned that over time. I think initially as the head coach here, I tried to be kind of like half Randy Walker and half Gary Barnett. And I just try to take everything from everybody. And I think when I was comfortable in my own skin, I really became the leader that I was capable of. And I think that's really challenging. Both coaches talk candidly about family. My dad was a coach. So, you know, I think it's helped me be a better father, be a better husband, because I knew how important it was, like when my dad could come to one of my games or come to a school play, how much that meant to me for him to be a part of my life, even though I knew how busy he was coaching his team. So I think that's helped me because I was on the other side of it. I think uh, being a father is, is the greatest joy of my life. Um, just to see our boys grow um, and learn and take on the challenges that you take on in life. I knew what love was, but I didn't know what unconditional love is. And now to, to have that and to see the type of uh, young men that they're becoming, I, I think is without a doubt what makes me tick uh, away from football. Jim Phillips has steered Northwestern's athletic department for nine years. I, I was born one of 10 children in the city of Chicago. I'm a first generation, four year college student. Um, come from humble beginnings. I had the best parents anyone could ever imagine. And so the love of academics, which was instilled by my parents, with sport, which I loved, and married the two together. And um, that's the love affair that I've had in, in college sports. It's all encompassing, but there's nothing that I would ever want to do you know, more than I feel than this. Sports is a unifier, and sports at the college level brings a campus together like no other. It's not even close to being the most important thing that happens on a college campus, but it's similar to the front porch. It's an entry point into this much more uh, grander university. And if the front porch looks the part, and the paint isn't peeling, and the chairs aren't upside down, um, which is similar to having a well-run athletic department, there's this idea that the rest of the house is probably in order, and that's what I hope that Northwestern Athletics does to this university. In spring 2017, Northwestern announced contract extensions for both Fitzgerald and Collins, keeping them in Evanston nearly another decade. The symbolism was show those two together and make sure that people understand that they can coexist, and not only can they coexist, they can thrive and be each other's biggest advocates and biggest supporters and biggest fans. We just developed an amazing friendship. Uh, we've been very supportive of each other in our seasons. Each coach's medal is being tested these days. In the football world, CTE and concussion studies loom large. Fitzgerald says the sport is evolving. I'm involved with USA Football and the Heads Up initiative. I'm also uh, trying to be involved as much with high school coaches as I can be about teaching the right fundamentals and techniques. Uh, and I believe this is as safe of, of, of a game of football as we've ever had. Um, but taking the head out of tackling and blocking uh, is, was a huge step about 10 years ago for our game. And I still think we're starting to see that grassroots approach make its impact now to college, which will then make an impact to the pros. I think medicine is finally caught up to the injury. In college basketball, fraud and bribe allegations are rocking several other non-Big Ten schools, with the FBI alleging complicated corruption schemes. Even though Northwestern's not named in the charges, Coach Collins has something to say about the federal probe. Well, I think first is the, the misnomer in all this is it's, you're not talking about a majority <laughs> of the programs. I still believe that most people, you know, do things the right way. You know, if people have broken the rules, then, then I believe they should be punished. At the end of the day, I think we all would like uh, to have college sports, especially college basketball, be what it is, amateur basketball. You know, with student athletes that go to college that are not professionals, that, you know, uh, work hard and, and play at a high level and, and try to win and, and then move on to the professional ranks after their, their time. Jim Phillips describes the allegations as disappointing and unacceptable. 
the heart of it is a, a really a tough time. It, you know, we're all distraught about it. But I think we can get to a better place by learning about what's happening and taking steps to make sure it doesn't happen again. But I also see that there's a lot of good happening in the sport of college basketball as well that's being overshadowed because of what's happened you know, in this particular situation. Two of the most wonderful things that college sports allows is access and affordability to a population of high school students that may not be able to access a college or university degree. In the history of the United States, besides the GI Bill, there has never been a group of students that have benefited more, i.e. from scholarships, than student athletes do on an annual basis. And that, to me, is really significant. So really, why are these successful coaches staying put at the Big Ten's smallest and only private university? Why haven't they bolted for bigger sports schools? It's 100% people. That's the reason why. You know, you want to be surrounded by people that are better than you, smarter than you, more talented than you. And then the opportunity as a Chicago to stay close to home uh, was a great experience, not only for me, but for my entire family. My life wouldn't be where it's at today without Northwestern. So I'm very privileged to have my role. I feel very fortunate. And uh, now my job is to help young men have the experience that I had to help change their lives for the better. I love being in Northwestern. Uh, it's a great place filled with wonderful people. Um, but I think the main thing is I'm happy. You know, I, I think when you you look at a whole bunch of things, it's, you know, are you happy with where you're at? Are you happy with the job you have? Is your family in a good place? Uh, we love living in this area. I love what we're building. You see all the exciting things that are going on with the new facilities projects, uh, being in Chicago, being at Northwestern, working for great guys like Morton Shapiro, our president, Jim Phillips, our athletic director. Optimism conviction, quality shared by two coaches and their boss. There's nothing that brings a university community together like sport does. It's just a fact because it's a chance to maybe forget about some of the tough moments in our life. That's the beauty of sport, the ability to bring a community together and the ability to, to showcase this wonderful university. Julie Peterson, Evanston, Illinois.